Hey friends and welcome back to another episode of my Christmas in July crafting. So in today's episode, I'm going to be using some of this collage paper that I made during one of my lives a few days ago, and we're going to be turning some of these cookie cutters into some really cute ornaments with this paper and then some other embellishments. So before we get started making this project, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Subscribe, turn on that little notifications bell so you're notified when I post a new video and make sure it's set to all. All right, so let's get started with this project. So I have gathered up a few items that I'm gonna be using in this project. If you wanna see how I made this collage paper, you can rewatch the live. It is posted um, in my on my channel, so go ahead and watch that first. Um, but it's really simple. I just used scrap Christmas paper and collaged it all onto just a sheet of copy paper. And it actually um, made this almost more like a cardstock now. It's, it's pretty, you know, thick feeling. So we're gonna be using this paper along with an assortment of cookie cutters. You can use whatever cookie cutters you want. I just grabbed a handful of Christmas cookie cutters. I have so many. I have so many up in my shop as well. And I actually have more that will be going up um, within these next couple of days. So I grabbed an angel, a bell, a little candle, a Santa Claus boot, a Christmas tree, and a star. So we're gonna start with those ones for the project. Now, in addition to the paper and the cookie cutters, I also collected up some other items. Now, if you watch my videos, you know I like to use a lot of vintage, authentic vintage items in my crafting. So many of these pieces are vintage. The a lot of the cookie cutters are vintage. I also have some vintage greenery. This is that kind of like plastic looking Christmas um, holly berry. I love using this. I got quite a few sprigs of this um, from the Goodwill bins one time so I've been really trying to use this up in a lot of my projects. Um, another little half of a candle holder I've used the other half but this has some little plastic berries and pine cones and then just um, another little piece of pine needle and you can get these usually at like Hobby Lobby or I've actually gotten some at Dollar Tree um, in the greenery picks and then just you know cut them off of the actual picks the Dollar Tree picks and then I just have a little bit more I think this is like, this is like a blue spruce it's a little bit smaller which I liked the smaller um, size on this I thought this might work better with the smaller ornaments um, and then I also have a tub of faux pearl beads so there's all different sizes in here I'm not sure how many I'm going to use but I just have an assortment of those um, I have some other beads and charms and vintage brooches and all kinds of like little blingy things I have a couple little I think this was a vintage earring um, or actually it was a button that one was a button this one was a button as well um, I have some little fabric beads that came off of a vintage bracelet um, I have other pieces of like little rhinestone and just little like blingy stones and just a bunch of little charmy blingy things that we can use to decorate so I've kind of just set those off in the side and then I also have I don't know if I'm going to be using many of these but I have little tiny bells um so I might use a couple of the little bells to decorate and I also have um some rub and buff um, antique gold which we're going to be using to kind of distress and antique these uh, cookie cutters a little bit more than what they are some of them do have a really nice uh, patina like this one right here is definitely an older one um, it has some nice rust and patina on it um, but I'm going to go ahead and use this rub and buff antique gold to kind of give them just kind of a little bit more of a varnish all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start distressing some of my cookie cutters with the antique gold rub and buff if you've ever used rub and buff before you'll know that it's not really like a paint it's almost like a cream um I've actually used my fingers to put it on things before it blends out really well and it drives almost like with a matte finish um it is a it's a wax 
wax metallic finish. So I will link this in the description of the video. So I'm using just a little sponge. And again, you can see it's almost like a cream consistency right there. I just put a little bit, a little goes a long way. You don't need much at all. And I'm just going to kind of rub around the edges of all of my cookie cutters with my little I don't know if you can kind of see it there. Um, I don't want it like fully covered. I just want kind of like the edges covered in that gold kind of um, vintage look. So again, I'm just going to take, you can even put a little bit on a plate. Um, now again, this is not, does not come off with water. Um, so whatever you use, you want to use like either a paint thinner or something to, to clean your um, sponge with, or just buy a disposable sponge that you don't care. Um, you can just throw it out afterwards. I find these like little tiny disposable sponges. They have these at the Dollar Tree um, and they're great because you can just use them and then throw them out. Um, okay, so you can see I'm just kind of going all around the edges with that gold rub and buff. And you can even kind of go down the sides and on the back a little bit, like on all of the corners, but it just distresses them out a little bit and gives them almost like a that vintage patina that um, like older cookie cutters have. Now these ones probably are a little bit older, but they're probably not quite like antique. They're probably like 80s or 90s, um, but I want them to look kind of really old. I'm just going all around and rubbing that rub and buff right in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then we'll be back right, when we're so done. I'm just finishing up my last cookie cutter here with the rub and buff. And I just want to mention that if you put the rub and buff on the cookie cutters, you cannot use them to cook with or to bake with any longer. Um, I wouldn't, they're, you know, it's not food safe. So just be aware of that. If you're gonna reuse these again for actual cooking, um, don't put the rub and buff on them. But that kind of just goes without saying. Okay, so as you can see, these are really kind of patinaed up nicely. They look like kind of nice old, the old ones. This boot one came out really nice. Just lots of kind of vintage gold, rusty kind of patina. And I like that if you have kind of a, sh a shinier one, it kind of dulls up that shininess a little bit and gives it kind of just a, I don't know, a more vintage look. All right, so I have all of those done. Um, this stuff dries pretty quickly, um, but I would let them sit and dry for a good 10 or 15 minutes before you actually use them. All right, so the next step, once the patina has dried on your cookie cutters, if you decide to do that step, you don't have to do that, but I just like to, um, I'm going to take my papers, my collage papers that I made, and I'm flipping them over. I don't care what print is going to show through on what ornament um I kind of want to be want to have it just scattered so I'm flipping them over and then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my cookie cutter and I'm going to trace out the shape of my cookie cutter right on to the paper And then once I have it traced, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And I'm gonna do the same thing for each one of my cookie cutters. All right, so I have all of my shapes cut out that correspond with all of my cookie cutters. And it's kind of fun because you don't know exactly what's going to be on your shapes um, because you flipped the paper over. Obviously, if you want something specific on there, you can, you know, trace on the front side, but I kind of just like to be surprised and then kind of work with what I'm surprised with. So I definitely save all of my scraps too, because this is like perfect for clusters, which I'm going to be making clusters um, probably during another live video. So I'm going to set all of my scraps and my leftover paper aside, and we're going to take our cutouts and now what we're going to do is we are going to glue these um, backings, I should say, to the backs of my cookie cutters. 
kind of like that. And you can use either hot glue, you can use, um, I'm going to use something, I'll probably use hot glue only because it's going to um, work with the metal quickly and for the sake of the video. Um, but you can use like E6000 or any other kind of glue that will stick with the metal. But we're going to use hot glue for this project. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my hot glue and just on the... Um, I'm not going to go around the whole cookie cutter. I'm just going to kind of go on like the corners and every few like centimeters. Just do a little dot of glue. I don't want it like bleeding out too much onto the paper. I just want enough to hold there. All right. And then just carefully set that right down onto your paper. Now I also, when I'm cutting, if you can see, I cut my paper a little bit on the larger side just because I know I'm going to be gluing down onto it. You can always trim that off afterwards if you don't like the looks of it, um, but it's definitely better than having like the backing not big enough and then you're going to have holes in your ornament so i'm going to go and glue all of my backings to each one of my ornaments all right so i have the backs on all of my cookie cutters and i just want to mention because i didn't mention this prior if you have a cookie cutter that is not symmetrical and i actually ran into this myself when i was working on these these ones up here are symmetrical meaning both sides are the same so when you um cut them backwards they'll still be the same frontwards but these two are not symmetrical so if it's like an odd shape like a boot or a candle or something that's not the same on both sides you want to flip your cookie cutter upside down when you're tracing it so that way when you cut the paper out it's um, being cut out on the right side because I ended up doing that with this one let me see if I can show you if I, I saved the scrap piece I I cut the candle out so that way it was actually facing backwards rather than frontwards because this one is not a symmetrical piece. So just so you know, for future, if you're making this project, if it's not symmetrical, just flip it so that your blade is up when you're tracing and that way it will cut the right way when you go to fussy cut it out. Okay, so these are actually adorable as is. I think they are very cute. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm flipping them all over. And because there's just the plain paper on the back with kind of my trace line, I'm going to take my um, ink and I am using the Ground Espresso um, Archival Ink. And I'm gonna distress these up just a little bit on the back side, just to make this paper kind of look worn and I'm just gonna go around the edges because I'm also gonna put some tinsel on the back. But I want, I don't want this like bright color. I want to darken it up so that they look vintage on the back as well as the front. So as you can see, now it looks nice and distressed and I'm gonna do this for all of my papers as well, or all of my cookie cutters as well. So as you can see, I have all of my backs all distressed up and then the fronts are distressed and very patinaed looking with that um, rub and buff gold. And then you have the pretty image of the collaged paper on the inside of the ornaments. Now, again, you could just hang these as is, but we're going to decorate them a little bit further with some more greenery and a little bit of bling that we have. All right, so I'm gonna take this vintage button with these kind of rhinestones there's a, it's actually missing a few of their little rhinestones but that's okay it looks vintage it's old and we're gonna hot glue that to this star one and I'm just gonna put some hot glue right on the little center portion I want to put some more on the center of the star as well and we'll just sit that little button right down in the hot glue and I'm just gonna hold it upright so it dries flat. And so for some of the other ones, like the Christmas tree here, I really like the scene on the back, so I don't wanna cover that up too much, but I am gonna take a couple of little of these vintage um, threaded beads 
I'm just going to kind of scatter them throughout the inside of my little Christmas tree here. As you can see, I'm just kind of scattering them. And I also have some green beads. I'm going to do the same thing with a couple of the green beads. I'm just going to stick those right down in there without covering up too much of that background. I just want a little bit of something back there. Now, I also really like this other button and I thought this would be really cute right in the center of my angel, right in the center there. So I'm gonna put some hot glue back there. And we'll stick that button right back into that hot glue, kind of right in the center. And just like I did with the other one, you got to hold these buttons in place so that they set in that hot glue. Okay, so for the bell, I'm going to use a little piece of this greenery right at the top of the bell. And I'm going to just hot glue that on. And then I'm going to take one of my little plastic pieces here, and I'm going to glue that right down into the top of the bell. If you can see. Put a little hot glue just around there and I'm going to glue that right down in there just so that it's setting kind of at the top of that little bell. You can see I have a little bit of this blingy. Yeah, let's do let's do a little bit of this bling. And I don't I just have this like little rhinestone on a chain here. And we're gonna just glue a little bit right where the bell would be. So right here, put a little bit of hot glue and then we'll take that rhinestone and we'll glue that rhinestone right down into that hot glue. Be careful with your fingers on this. It's not going to take the whole thing, so I'm going to clip it off. So I have some little wire clips. I'm just going to clip it off. I think the glue is holding it there. So yeah, I just put a little bit of bling right down there just to give it an extra little sparkle, which is cute. And I might do that on the angel wings also. Now I get all of my little supplies like this all from the Goodwill bins. Um, most of this stuff is from like broken jewelry or comes off pieces of clothing or other things. I'll like take things and pull them apart and reuse them. So all of these little bits and bobs for the most part that I have um, come from the Goodwill bins. So you can thrift a lot of crafting supplies. Okay, so yeah, so that's pretty. Just a little bling on her wings, and then she's got a little bling on the inside right there. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the handle of our candle. I'm going to take a little bit more of this greenery. I like this small greenery because it's just the right size. It's not too big. So I'll clip some of that. And also, my little clips here that I have, um, I think I got these on Amazon, um, but they are so handy. They're just small little wire clips, and they're perfect for crafting. So I use them all the time. So again, I'm just going to make a little loop just like that, and I'm going to glue it almost like it's a little wreath. I'm going to glue it right to like the handle. Plug my hot glue back in because it is starting to die. And we'll take another one of our little plastic vintage pieces of greenery. And we'll do just like we did on the um, bell. We'll put the little greenery right there on the handle. And then I actually have this little oval shaped, I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's kind of like, um, it's a little flat bead, but I thought that might be cute, um, kind of up where the flame is on the back, if you can see it back there, kind of up where the flame is. So I think I'll glue that back there. Kind of see it back up in there, just a little glow of the candle. 
And then we have our boot. I really like this boot. I think this is really cute. And I like, um, I don't know, I like the little, I think this will be cute on it. I like the little plastic uh, pine cone. So we're gonna clip one of those off. And I think we'll put this guy, where do we wanna put this guy? Maybe up at the top of the boot? up here I'm thinking yeah let's kind of put him up there so we'll put some glue on that and we'll kind of stick that right to the inside right, so I'm also going in and filling in some space with the little pearls as well just kind of as accents to my other pieces that I put in each one of these little ornaments so just maybe a couple in each one. I'm not gonna go crazy with it, but as you can see, I just put a few in there. You can mix and match sizes. You can do some larger ones, some smaller ones, but I think the pearls just kind of accentuate each one of these and gives them a little bit more depth and kind of richness. So I'm just putting a few little dots of glue. And then I'm taking a few different size pearls and just, Kind of like scattering them scattering them in there as well I'll do maybe a couple over on this side so now I'm really gonna make these look vintage and I'm gonna flip them over and we are gonna line the back side of each one of these with some tinsel so I have some little thin tinsel here I'm not gonna do ton but I want a little bit and so basically I'm just gonna take my hot glue and just quickly put it on my backing of my paper and put my tinsel into that hot glue and I'm gonna trim it off right here do a little bit more up top up there and trim that down and then just push that tinsel right down onto the back so that way your tinsel kind of pops out behind your um, your ornament and if there's any spots that are coming undone I have a little spot right here just go back in and glue it down again with a little bit more glue All right. So that tinsel makes these look really vintage. I know or a lot of ornaments, a lot of vintage ornaments use a lot of tinsel and garland and stuff like that. So I think these are turning out really cute. So we're gonna just back each one of them with some tinsel. And you can use whatever color you want. I just happen to have a little bit of vintage gold tinsel, so that's what I'm All right, using. So I have my tinsel on the back of each one of my little ornaments. They look so cute, so vintage. So I am gonna put a hang tag on these. And for my hang tag, I'm gonna use some twine and some authentic vintage curling ribbon. This was a new old stock of ribbon, so I'm gonna use some of it for these ornaments. And it is just gorgeous ribbon. So we're just gonna do um, a little hang tag. Keeping it pretty simple, I'm just gonna do um, a knot for these hang tags. Now you can do them as bit tall or short as you want. I'm gonna do, let's see. So my knot is gonna be about three inches. So it's about a three inch knot like that. And so I'm just putting a little loop in my knot and then I'm just cutting my loop. And then what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna take some of this ribbon this is curling ribbon I don't want to do too much of it but I'm going to take a little bit of it and we're going to curl it just going to make a couple little curls in it this one actually has got a little rip in one side that's okay it split so it actually looks looks cute like that I might split the other side too so I would have like double little curls in that one, which looks really cute. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just glue this right to my hang tag. 
and we will glue this right to the back of our ornament with some hot glue. I'm gonna take that knot, I'll sit that knot right in the hot okay, glue. So I glued my knot right to the top back of my little ornament, and then I took my little piece of curling ribbon and just kind of wrapped it around, um, kind of hiding that knot so that the little curls kind of stick out in the back there. So now you have a cute little hang tag for your little ornaments. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing for each one of these ornaments. So these little vintage cookie cutter ornaments came out so cute. They are so nostalgic. They will make great little ornaments for a Christmas tree or a great little gift to give somebody who enjoys those nostalgic vintage items. Like me, I love things like this. These will be going up in my shop, so be on the lookout for those for our um, Christmas in July sale coming up very soon. I probably will start listing things over the weekend for that, but I really enjoyed making them. I love the element of using the collaged Christmas paper um, as the background for these, but you don't have to use that. You could use wrapping paper, you could use um, book page, you could use music paper, a lot of different options on um, what you could use in the background. But anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button and subscribe so you're notified when my next video posts. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.